Hello everyone, I'm Andy Oakley, the leader of the One New Zealand Party. This is the second in a series of videos in which I'm explaining our economic policy which is based on macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is the correct way to view how the economy works in a country that has and issues its own sovereign currency, in our case, the New Zealand dollar. Unfortunately for us, our economic advisers and successive governments in New Zealand do not see the economy through the macro lens, and that is precisely why we are a low wage and low productivity country. They have become obsessed with trying to balance the books as if they were currency users rather than being a currency issuer, which the government is. Think about it. If you could uh, issue yourself and your family currency, as our government can at will, would you feed your children on low quality food and live in a dump? Well, of course you wouldn't. If you were responsible, you would uh, have your children educated properly, feed them well, and teach them to be good people. And you'd live in a comfortable house that suits your needs. Our government have the ability to provide the citizens of New Zealand everything they need to live comfortably and safely, including a health system that can take, near of, need, uh, take care of the needs of all, free education, modern infrastructure and, to, uh, infrastructure and to pay the pensions of those who have worked all their lives and who are now retired. They don't have to put up the pension age and they don't have to be miserly with the pension payout. They just choose to. In a macroeconomic environment, the only limit on spending is the productive capacity of the country. Not the amount of tax revenue they take from businesses and private citizens or the public debt, uh, debt level to GDP ratio, which is another stupid rule the current economic advisors have the government obey. So let's just look at what this public debt really is, because you'll be surprised. It's not debt at all. Let's imagine that the budget announcement, that at the budget amount, uh, announcement, the government state that they will issue $100 billion into the economy, which is pretty much what uh, Grant Robinson just did. X amount on health, X amount on education, infrastructure projects, etc. Grant Robinson then states that they calculate tax revenue and earnings of, a, of 80 billion. Because they are obsessed with balancing the books and following the silly rules in the Public Finance Act, they think that they must raise another 20 billion dollars from somewhere. Under the current system, how they get that extra 20 billion is that is they issue interest attracting securities in the bond market. Mum and dad investors, private investment companies, banks, and even other, even other countries snap these up. The $20 billion is deposited into our reserve bank. The purchasers hold a bond, and everyone's happy that we have enough reserve, reserves to stay, uh, to stay solvent. The downside is that everyone now believes that we are in debt. And not only do we have to repay these institutions, we also have to pay interest on the loan. Every year they do this, the public debt levels rise. And at present, they are scaring you all by stating that the government debt, known as the public debt, is about $157 billion. But wait, if you remember the video that we did about deficits, the $20 billion difference between what the government spent spend into, uh, or issue into the economy and what they get back in tax is still in the economy. It must be. They spent it in there, and the only way to get it out is to increase taxes. But the thing is, they don't need the $20 billion. The government can issue currency at any time it chooses. We do not operate under the gold standard anymore. The New Zealand government are the sole decision maker as, as to when and how much currency they issue. Every time the government issue currency or pay for anything, it is a new dollar, and they do it with a keystroke. They do not need to, need to reach their hands into the reserve banks and pull dollars out to spend them. At present, though, as a result of poor economic advice from the neoclassical economists and poor legislation in the Public Finance Act, successive governments who are ignorant about the economy are running an accounting system that is full of needless rules and uh, which is encourages them to try and balance the books. Okay, so you might ask, what happens with the $20 billion, uh, deposited into the Reserve Bank? Well, just like a private bank, the money is held for whatever the period the bond was bought for. And like a private bank, the government pay interest on it. When the term is up, it's, uh, just like a private bank, they simply give the money back. So this, this is a net zero tra transaction. $20 billion was deposited in, and $20 billion was withdrawn. 
Nobody was in debt, and the money was govern government guaranteed. It's guaranteed in the sense that the New Zealand government can never be insolvent. This is the case for any country that issues its own sovereign currency. But the government paid interest, I hear you say. That's correct. But remember, the government can issue currency at will, so that interest payments are not a liability to anyone. So to recap, the government are empowered to issue currency whenever they wish. However, they choose to follow the bad advice of Treasury, the Reserve Bank and other economists in that they starve the country of currency and overtax the workers and businesses. People such as Bill English and Grant Robinson call this behaviour fiscal austerity. The result of this fiscal austerity is that we are a low-wage, low-productive country and low-wage people are forced to borrow from the banks. Hence, New Zealanders are some of the most indebted people in the world. Our household debt levels are 93% of GDP. So we have had successive governments running in an economy that does not allow businesses to pay well because they're overtaxed. The workers can't spend much because they don't get much. And what they do get is overtaxed. So they must borrow. And guess who are trying to prevent the people from borrowing by asking the banks to carry more capital against their loan book? That's right, the government. So they are squeezing the economy into submission at both ends. And you, the public, are voting them in. Although I must say that you haven't had much of a choice because none of the other parties understand the economy either. And that includes all these new parties springing up too. The One New Zealand Party do not want to alter New Zealand's economy. We want to lower the tax burden by going to a flat 20% tax for workers and 28% for businesses. There is also no requirement for GST, as the government does not rely on taxes to spend. So that will go as well. So if you want to live a life of fiscal abundance instead of fiscal austerity, support us by joining us, donating or volu volunteering to help. At present, you can connect and get a membership form from our Facebook page, and a website's coming too. I've been Andy Oakley, no Orumai.